can be a musician and you can travel, and I think that's the main goal for me. If I can live off music and you know, go around the world with it, then that's going to be awesome. What's going on here today is three artists, one, an opportunity to talk to Lee and uh, myself about place to give them advice on their music. It's nice to kind of have a couple of people that have done some stuff to actually give you some straight answers about the reality of how it actually is, you know. The most valuable thing that you can offer anyone is just perspective, a different perspective. I kind of grew up around the time that Silverchair were pretty big. It's kind of a little bit strange having him in the room. We got involved with Daniel around the new the new commercial, which you've you've probably seen. When I heard that Daniel was doing it, I obviously went and had a listen straight away. I remember just kind of the first time seeing it and just being like, ah, oh, it's nice that he stepped away a little bit from rock and roll and you know silver chair that kind of stuff. We felt that it'd be really nice to introduce him to Sire Spirit of Youth Awards and clearly the music category. It's really inspiring hearing what new artists are doing and hearing what they've got to offer. Yeah, maybe the maybe thing to do is to maybe start off with maybe listening to some of your favourite tracks of each of your thing and we can kind of get a, go from there. I started kind of playing music when I was pretty young, maybe 14. What's this track called then, chap? Uh, for My Help. Like, it's all kind of based around folk, but I bring in other elements of, like, electronica and all these other kind of things find their way in somehow. How did that track come about? Where did you start? It's kind of playing with a bit of, like, falsetto stuff. And... Okay. Yeah. Beautiful dynamics in it as well. Yeah, it sounds yeah. great, man. Cheers. I get really inspired around new artists and new musicians. I remember what it was like. <laughs> Courtney, what's going on? I've kind of been playing for a long time in bands and, and playing with other people. I got drunk and fell asleep atop the sheets, but luckily I left the heater on. And in my dreams I... For this one, I was listening to lots of Nick Cave, so that's why there was that group chorus yeah. chant thing. It works really well. It's an amazing yeah. moment of life. That sounds sound very good to me, yeah. The amazing thing about all three of them was that it was all self-produced. So as a producer, I would kind of come in and listen to it and kind of think, that actually sounds almost finished, you know. Do you play one of Caitlin's tracks then? I've been a musician for many years. I started playing the saxophone, of all things, when I was nine. I started writing my own music as folk music and then sort of trying to turn it more into something that's more storytelling or story-like. I do spend a lot of energy on lyrical content, then there's the electroacoustic side. How do you do it live? I think live performances should always sound different from a record. Right, OK. I agree with you, though. Know, uh, playing live, I, can't, yeah, I always want it to be different mm. as well. To have Daniel have a listen and to have his input and his feedback. That's it. <laughs> really good. For it to be positive is mind-blowing. It's really good. 